In order to add and subtract rational expressions, we're going to do the same sorts of steps that we would do if we had regular old numerical fractions. So that starts with finding a least common denominator. Now this might be a little bit different than what you had learned for your number situation, but this is going to be the most straightforward way for us to work out the least common denominator for these rational expressions. We want to start, step one, factor each expression. So in this first example that we've got, we're going to want to factor each of these three expressions as much as possible, and then we'll move on to step two. Factoring that first expression to be technical, we would want to write x times x. Moving on to the second expression, we're using our factoring checklist, and we're going to have a greatest common factor of x. When we pull the x out, we're going to have a leftover x minus 1. Moving on to the third expression, factoring that, there is no GCF. That has two terms, so we're going to use our difference of squares factoring formula, and that will be x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now this takes care of the first step. So the second step says we want to include every factor from the very first expression, or the first denominator, which means that when we start writing out our least common denominator, our least common multiple here, we're going to start with just those factors that we did for the very first expression. Now we move on to step three, and we've got these questions, basically, that we're going to ask the same question for each of the remaining expressions. Do we have any extra factors that we haven't written down yet? So we look here, we've got an x and an x minus 1. Do we have any factors that haven't been written down? We already wrote down an x, but we do not have an x minus 1 that is included here yet. So we're going to include the x minus 1. We move to the third expression. We look at the factored version of this and ask that question again. Do we have any factors that haven't been written down yet? We have not written down an x plus 1. So we include that in our least common multiple, our least common denominator. We do already have an x minus 1 that appears, so we do not need and do not want to put in an extra one of those. So this is the long version of our answer. A shorter looking version would be to go back to writing x squared followed by the x minus 1, x plus 1. Now we're going to use those same steps and keep those up on the screen in order to work out the next example, first step, factor each of the expressions that appears. So, x minus 5, x minus 1. The second expression factors as x minus 4, x minus 1. And the third expression factors as x minus 5, x minus 4. Our second step tells us to just copy down the factors that showed up in that very first expression. So I'm going to copy down the x minus 5 times the x minus 1. Look at the second expression. Is there any factor that hasn't been written down yet? Well, I haven't written down an x minus 4. So let me include an x minus 4 in my answer. I do already have an x minus 1 that appears, so I do not include another one. I move to my third expression and say, do I have any factors that haven't appeared yet? Well, I already have an x minus 5. I already have an x minus 4, so this is not giving me anything extra, and my answer has just those three factors in it. This is the approach that we want to take any time that we have to find a least common denominator. So now we want to move on to the other steps that are needed for adding and subtracting these rational expressions. Again, these go back to the kinds of steps that are used for regular numerical fractions. So as an example, I have all the steps written out for taking care of the 
adding problem 1 over 6 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 18. Just stated as a fact that the least common denominator is a 90, I need to change all of these fractions so that they would have a 90 in the denominator. So I have to adjust each of these fractions by putting in an extra piece both on the bottom and on the top. So that depends on what do I start with. I start with 6. I need to create a 90, so I need to use a times by 15. I have the note in red just above where I'm pointing that says that what I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator. As soon as I put in that times by 15 on the bottom, I need to come up to the top and put in exactly that same times by 15. I need to do exactly that same sort of step for the other two fractions so that I can create three fractions that have that same denominator of 90. Then, moving this so that you can see the remaining steps at the bottom, after I have all three of those fractions, I want to put my numerators all together by adding or subtracting. While keeping my denominator the same, I get a fraction answer, and always my last step is to consider, can I reduce this? And in this particular case, we cannot. It's exactly these same sorts of steps that we're going to do, even though we might have, we would say, a more complicated looking problem to work out. Find the least common denominator adjust each of the fractions that we have so that that LCD will appear. Then go ahead and put all the numerators together through proper adding and subtracting while keeping the LCD on the bottom. And for many of our homework problems, we're going to start exactly at that step. For a few of them, though, we will have to begin at step one. However, we need to simplify that numerator, so we're going to have to bring in our chapter 5 information where we would need to worry about maybe some FOIL, some distributing, some combining like terms, so that we can get a completely simplified numerator. And then at the very end, we may need to be able to factor that numerator and do some reducing, only if it's possible. It may or may not be. Let's take a look at a first example here. We already have, in both fractions, the same denominator of x minus 2, which means that we can begin right away with adding our numerators together and keeping the denominator the same. Now, officially, step 4 says we need to simplify. Well, there's no simplifying that needs to take place. We're good with what we already have written down in this particular problem. So we can say we're already good here. When I look at this, the numerator and denominator can't be factored since there's no identical factor that shows up in both the top and bottom. There is no reducing that is possible. Moving on to another example, this time one with subtraction where I want to make sure that I'm careful about the subtraction, as we've said in the past. Again, I have a common denominator already appearing in both of these, so to get started, I'm going to combine my numerators together. This time I'm using parentheses to be extraordinarily careful to avoid any possible mistakes that might occur. Again, I put my numerators together, and I keep my denominator the same. I don't really need the first set of parentheses, but I do need the second set so that I recognize that I distribute the minus sign. The minus sign connects with the x, and the minus sign connects with the negative 2. And now I have also some like terms that can be combined to give me a fully simplified numerator, x squared minus 3x plus 4. The only other possibility is that there might be some reducing. If I take a look at this particular expression here in the numerator, there's no greatest common factor. If I try to use the AC method, I will not make any progress, which means that that numerator cannot be factored, and if it can't be factored, 
that I cannot do any reducing, and I have my final answer here. Leaving us with an example of starting from step one where we would need to find a common denominator. So, we have those same expressions that appeared in our earlier example, but to start with those again as if they appeared from scratch, I want to factor each of my numerators. Then I want to go through a set of questions. They all sound very much the same, except for the first question, which just simply states what factors appear in the first denominator. Well, let's write those in blue. x times x. And that's going to be the beginning part of my LCD. Then move on to that green question. What factors appear in the second denominator that we haven't written down yet? Well, we have an x, but we do not have an x minus 1. So let's go ahead and include that in our LCD. And then we move on to the red question. What factors show up in the third denominator that haven't been written down yet? Well, we don't have an x plus 1, so that needs to be included in our LCD. We do have an x minus 1, so we're set with that. And again, our simpler version of that least common denominator would be x squared times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now we've got to move on to the second step where we have to look at what already appears in each denominator versus what we need to show up in the LCD. That first fraction has a denominator of x squared. My LCD has two other pieces which I'll write in pink. I need an x minus 1 and an x plus 1. As soon as I put those in the denominator, I need to move those up and into the numerator of that first fraction. The middle fraction has in its denominator an x and an x minus 1. My LCD has x squared. Well, I haven't achieved that yet. I need an extra x. My LCD also has an x plus 1 that doesn't show up until I write it down in orange. And now that I have written this extra collection in orange, I need to immediately put that in the numerator as well. And in the last of my fractions, I have an x minus 1 and an x plus 1 that already appear. So what's missing from the least common denominator is x squared. As soon as I put an x squared on the bottom, I need to put that also on the top. This is adjusted all three of my fractions, and now I'm ready to move on to my third step where I combine all my numerators together. So we have 1 x minus 1 times x plus 1 for our first numerator, plus 1 times x times x plus 1 from our second numerator, plus 1x squared from our third numerator. And again, step 3 says that for our denominator, that is going to stay the same as our LCD. Now we need to bring in our chapter 5 knowledge and be able to do our multiplying and combining like terms. So if we go through the multiplying, we do FOIL, we do distributing, and now we would be in a position to combine our like terms and get a simplified numerator. Combining our like terms gives us 3x squared plus x plus 1. There is no greatest common factor for the top. If I try to use my AC method, I will find that 
it does not work. Since it does not work, the numerator does not factor. Therefore, this answer cannot be reduced, and this is my final answer. 